There isn't a single president in the world out there right now that has a YouTube with over a million subscribers, let alone a social media presence as big as Trump does. This is a guy who's literally in his 70s, catches COVID, spends the next seven days tweeting like 400, 500 tweets. What other world leader has not just the audacity, but the, I'd say wits to actually have an online campaign in a time like this. As you get older, you're not gonna be accepting of new technology as much. Like in your case, in my case, our generation is probably the internet generation, so we adopt it, it's fine. But when virtual reality becomes a big thing, I think I'd be resistant to it just a slight bit. And maybe you'd be resistant to it too. So a guy in his 70s starts a YouTube and just knows how to make the viral content. The one thing that this guy does correctly, and obviously it's not him personally, it's a team. You don't have a single person managing these kind of YouTubes, especially for a political purpose. But the team, the fact that he even arranged a team or made a team up in the first place is the real indicator for why Trump is gonna win the election. Everybody, everybody that adapts succeeds. Everybody that doesn't adapt doesn't succeed. And if you look at right now specifically Joe Biden versus Trump, so Joe Biden, what's he done so far? This guy, he did a town hall and Trump even accused him that the only reason he does these town halls is because he can't bring in an audience. The large rallies with crowds packed together, thousands of people. Outside. Outside, yes sir, agreed. Uh, Vice President Biden, you are holding much smaller uh, events with- Because nobody will show up. People with- <laughs> well, It's true, <laughs> nobody shows up to his okay. rallies. All right, in any case. Like one thing I'm learning about both sides of this election is that both sides are correct. When Joe Biden, So when Trump goes like, Joe Biden, you can't bring an audience, this and that. He's not wrong. He's attacking Joe Biden, where Joe Biden's weak. And Joe Biden does the same thing against Trump. And there's a lot of weaknesses that Trump has himself. So it's pretty easy to attack that guy. <laughs> now, politically, you might be either a Democrat or you might be siding with Joe Biden's team over Trump's team. But if you look at the specific constituents Who's riling up their followers more? Is it Biden who's making sure everyone's riled up, ready to vote? Or is it Trump who's making sure everyone's riled up and ready to vote? Funny enough, it's obviously Trump. The fact that he has a YouTube page where he posts memes of Joe Biden goofing up, like a seven second clip. I didn't continue to run. No, that's the commuter, all right. No, that's what. But folks, look. He'll just post this, and this is being posted like constantly. So to Trump, looking strong, the presentation of being strong is more important than anything else, which is not a logical thing. So what's he doing? He's not appealing to logic. What he's doing is he's appealing to whatever his fans want. And that's exactly why he's gonna win. Because if you're being real here, nobody votes based on logic. Let me ask you this, how many policies of Biden's do you know? Just name maybe even 10 policies. Do you know 10 of Biden's policies? Probably not. Do you know 10 of Trump's policies? Probably not. So what the fuck factor are you using to actually vote when you actually, you know, in November 3 comes around? Well, you're probably gonna go with your gut feeling. You know, if Biden's like the logical right choice, maybe you'll vote for Biden. But if you feel like Trump is the real leader, you'll vote for Trump. So Trump knows this and he doesn't even care about the facts at this point. He just kind of goes to whatever his peoples want and he amps them up, he hypes them up. Just take a look at all these debate footages and read the comments. Read the Biden comments and then read the Trump supporter comments. And you're gonna notice a real, uh, yo, my shoulder's dying. So you're gonna notice a clear difference between Biden supporters who will bring up like one or two logical points and Trump supporters who's who's the entire comment is gonna be like Sleepy Joe can't keep a sentence going or Basement Biden. I love these names, it's crazy. Like the fact that he uses these names as a campaign tactic should also tell you that his peoples want catchy names for the enemy because all they think about is 
oh, China's the worst, so we gotta, we gotta vote for Trump because Trump's gonna stand up for China. What happened four years ago? None of this shit was happening. Trump created this whole hype against China and his peoples love it. So because his peoples love it, he does more and more of it. Now this brings a bigger question up because is winning more important than doing it correctly? Some people argue that there's no other way to win except being a realist. So Trump would argue that the only way to win is by kicking, like punching below the belt and doing all these weird smear campaign tactics that he's doing. So yeah, if the world worked on morals, you wouldn't have corrupt leaders rising in power. So that should tell you. The people that win are the people that work the system correctly. Like, look at me. My YouTube has like 200 subscribers. I've been making 100 videos, but I'm not working the system correctly. I'm kind of doing whatever I feel like doing, which is probably hurting my subscriber base. If I wanted to be like a Trump, I'd use the algorithm to my advantage and use like keywords. I mean, I guess this is kind of a keyword. Donald Trump gets election year. So we'll see. We'll see where this goes. And in Trump's case, what he's doing it is at a mass scale. He's doing it at a point where he's tremendously confident he's gonna win. That's a real lesson that should be taken from this, which is that hold on, playing chicken against this like 10 lane road. So the real lesson should be that if you can understand the system well enough, then you can adapt to it correctly. And what's the system right now? The most popping system right now. It's YouTube. Pretty much everyone's going to YouTube for either news, updates. The amount of live shows that are coming up on YouTube is massive too. So Trump knows this. And he's adapted accordingly. Biden hasn't. And because of that, Trump's voters are more likely to see him in a favorable light than Biden's voters are gonna see him. Biden's voters might even logically think, no way Trump's gonna win another one. We shouldn't even vote. We don't have to vote. He's gonna lose for sure. But because they think that, like look at the polls, all the polls are saying Biden's gonna win for sure. But the fact that Trump is so confident, it tells me otherwise. He wasn't this confident against Hillary even. So why is he this confident now? Because maybe, they have their own polls that they're, they're looking at the metrics for and realizing, wait a minute, there's a way we can actually win this come November 3rd. And it's so crazy to me because if you look at the YouTube comments, if you read enough of the YouTube comments, you'll be like, no way on earth Biden's gonna win. Trump is for sure gonna win. But then if you look at the polls, all the polls say that Biden's leading by like 10 points, 15 points here and there. So what the fuck is actually happening? So what's really happening is the fact that you have a breaking down of the internet. Because this is what basically happens every time with our species. Something comes up, it's really good. It's so good that people exploit it. And then when people exploit it enough, you have to put rules and regulations. It becomes boring, but it becomes like grandfathered in. So it's safer for more people, but it kind of loses its freedom a little bit. And that's with every single technology that's ever come about. Now, this is just the latest version of it where the internet come, came about. And last 10, 15 years, it didn't matter if you were a hacker with like a thousand bots. But now that governments are actively using like a bot network of like maybe 10 million, 20 million random users that let's say make YouTube accounts, all these other random accounts. And they use AI to make the comments constantly posting comments, constantly downvoting your opposition. Suddenly, it's not a game about who's right and wrong, it's about whoever has the biggest bot network. That's it. You just have to have a network of robots doing your bidding because that's just the nature of YouTube and the internet right now. There's it's so much, there's like too much freedom. Okay, so the main point that I'm trying to make here is that Trump is at a point, well, YouTube is at a point where the rules and regulations haven't really been set in. The only kind of rules and regulations there is is kind of for music because I think Viacom sued YouTube years ago trying to get some of that Google money and then Google destroyed Viacom. But the, that caused the evolution and the regulation system of the copyright system that we have right now is based on that lawsuit. So there is some kind of rules and regulations, but there's no rules and regulations for comments. There's no rules and regulations for upvotes, downvotes, and anonymity. 
that's the main thing. The fact that you can be anonymous, you can have a network of robots making users. All you need is an email address. They don't verify whether you have an actual address. They don't verify that you're actually human. So Trump exploiting the fuck out of that. I mean, I don't know how to feel about it, but the fact is he's adapting as a 70 year old man in a landscape where his other opponent isn't adapting nearly as fast. So those things tell me that most likely there's a very strong there's a very strong case for Trump winning this election just because his voters are way more hyped than Biden's voters are going to be. And maybe because of that, there's going to be a lot of more fucked up repercussions from it. Because think about what his stance is on China. This guy has been like, if you watch the latest two, I'll put clips on him right below. Seniors, I'm a senior. I know you don't know that. Nobody knows that. Maybe you don't have to tell them, but I'm a senior. We are making tremendous progress with this horrible disease that was sent over by China. China will pay a big price for what they did to the world and to us. I want to get for you what I got, and I'm going to make it free. You're not going to pay for it. It wasn't your fault that this happened. It was China's fault. And China is going to pay a big price what they've done to this country. China is going to pay a big price what they've done to the world. Notice how the phrasing before these two clips, before he even had coronavirus, any of this, he never phrased it like this. China's going to pay a big price. That's like some revenge stuff. Like if you see it as a, like a kid who has no power, then it's petty. It's like, who gives a fuck what this kid's saying? It's like some angry rant. However, when the president of the United States says something like that, that's not a rant. That's almost like a threat. You're almost making a threat to a nation, which is crazy. So I'm not saying that I advocate for Trump or anything like that. I just, this whole video is about the fact that Trump is probably going to win this election because he's adapted to the online world way better than pretty much any world leader right now. In terms of personal brand, in terms of actual government agencies that are pretty proficient in the internet, I think there's a few competitors. But again, personal brand as a world leader, nobody has more subscribers than this guy. All right, Joe, my ride's here, so I'm gonna peace out. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think Biden's gonna win? Do you think Trump's gonna win? Let me know. All right, peace.